All right, welcome. This video is on goal setting for volleyball players. Let's go ahead and get started making this full screen. There we go. All right, so um, what I'm going to take you through is some foundational um, concepts about goal setting. Then I'm going to take you talk about the basics of goals um, and then get into a little bit more specifics in terms of goals that you can set for practice, goals that you can set for games, um, short-term goals, long-term goals. Um, and then wrap it up uh, with some conclusional ideas. And then we're also going to talk a little bit about team goals. All right, so let's get right into it. Um, so the first part is the foundation. You need to make sure that in order for you to accomplish your goals, that you're taking care of yourself and taking care of your brain. Um, so different things you need to think about are sleep, making sure you're getting enough sleep, exercise, um, and nutrition. Um, so science used to think that the brain that you got was just the brain that you got and nothing ever changed. Um, but we now know through proper sleep, proper exercise and proper nutrition, you can actually improve the quality of your brain. Um, so starting there with the foundation. <clears throat> so the first thing you wanna think about is the vision. The vision is kind of the overarching idea of who you want to be. It doesn't really have any rules. You can pretty much do anything you want with it, but it's important to kind of start there kind of the big picture and then get down into the nitty gritty of what you're trying to accomplish. Um, so questions you can think about when writing down your vision um, is what is your preferred future? Who is the best possible version of yourself? And think about it in physically, mentally, and emotionally. So this can be a little wider than just the volleyball. Um, and the way I like to also think about it is brainstorm yourself as if you were a character in a book. So if you were the protagonist, who, how, what qualities would you want that protagonist to have? Um, so a protagonist would be like an advocate or champion of a particular cause or idea. Um, and some synonyms, synonyms of a protagonist are champion, a promoter, proponent, fighter, crusader. So think, try and think about it in that way. Um, so here I gave you a little example um, of what I may possibly write as, as a vision for myself. Um, so you can go ahead and, and read that on your own. Give you a few seconds just to read that on your own. All right. And uh, so here are some concepts you can use to kind of think about when you're kind of piecing together your vision is you can first think about your core values. So what is your moral compass? Um, what, are, what helps you guide your decisions in life? And so I give you some examples of different core values people may have. Um, and then what are your priorities? What are you, what are you working for and always towards? Um, and when you're working towards something, what is, what is the, the couple of different things that you place at the, at the top priority when you're working towards them? And there's another set of examples there. Um, and then attributes. So what kind of qualities do you want to have and what kind of qualities do you want others to perceive that you have as well? Um, and think about other things like what's not important um, to your life. And this is not a judgment or saying that just because you don't find them important, other people that do find them important are wrong. This is simply just looking at things that maybe you just give less value to. Um, <clears throat> so that can help you think about uh, creating your vision. All right, so now you're going to go ahead and write a vision for yourself. So I would take, just hit pause and take two to five minutes um, and just write it out. Don't think about it too much. Just write free, free flowing thought. Um, you can always adjust it later. Um, some people prefer just to write bullet points. That might also work for you. And kind of have fun with it. Turn it into a little bit, little bit of a game. Um, so you kind of make the rules here. So go ahead and hit pause. And then once you write a few thoughts or ideas about your vision, um, we'll continue on. All right, so hopefully you hit pause and wrote a few ideas down about, about yourself. <clears throat> and now let's get into goals. So now we're getting into more specifics and goals is the process of turning that vision um, into a reality. Um, so we wanna think about keeping it simple. Um, we always wanna think about keeping it measurable. Um, and something that you're able to do. So if you remember from my other video um, about confidence building, I used the mnemonic, mnemonic TRAF, which is fart spelled backwards, to help give you some structure to your goals. It doesn't work all the time, but for a lot of them, they work. So you can think about time or repetitions. 
that you're going to be doing a certain activity, which is the next component of the A, and then F is the frequency. So how often are you going to be doing this activity? So when I give you an example here is, I will earn five kills per set, all right? Um, when you're writing your goals, you also wanna think about outcome versus process. So an outcome, outcome goal, uh, you wanna have a combination of both, I think, but you don't want to always have just outcome goals because the thing with outcome goals is they're not always just dependent on yourself. Sometimes they're contingent upon either others' opinions um, or others' actions. So, for example, the goal I did above, I will earn five kills per set. Um, do you think it's an outcome goal or a process goal? So it's an outcome goal because there's a lot of other contingencies that must come into play for you to earn five kills per set. So your team needs to be able to pass the ball to your setter, your setter needs to give you a set that you can actually produce into a kill, and then you're dealing with the other team putting up a block um, and digging up the ball as well. So um, a process goal would be something more like I will do five push-ups for five times a week. So that's something it's completely up to you to find the time and really the only thing holding you back is yourself. So that's more of, more of a process goal. And we'll talk a little bit more in, about that a little later. Um, and then you have different types of goals. So, and we're gonna get into specifics of that in terms of practice goals, game goals, um, long-term goals, and short-term goals. And then here's another graphic. So when we talk about whenever you like Google goal setting or, or whatever, you always get this little uh, mnemonic, um, which is called SMART, so SMART goal setting. Um, and you can kind of see, similar to some of the concepts I talked about, um, S is you want it to be specific, um, M is you want it to be measurable, A, you want it to be doable or attainable, um, R is keep it relevant, and then T is make it time-based. So that may also help when you're thinking about your goals. All right, so first we're gonna start out with goals for practice. Um, so I just gave you a bunch of different types of goals that you can use just to give you some ideas to get started. And I'll talk about um, each example and uh, how they differ a little bit. So the first one is I will do 10 push-ups before every practice. So again, this is something that you control, hopefully. You know, it has to depend if, if you don't have that much time before practice, maybe this isn't something that's relevant for you. Um, but this is something ideally, hopefully you can control, getting there a little early to practice and just you know, getting 10 push-ups. You're working on your, on your physical strength for the game. Um, I will serve five game-like serves before leaving each practice. So this one is more skill related to the game of volleyball. <clears throat> um, also, if you don't have the opportunity to stay after and work on your serves, and then this one won't work for you. Um, I will arrive five minutes early to every practice. So this is just you know, being on time um, and ready to go. I will leave at least one positive, I will give at least one positive comment to a teammate at each practice. Now, so this goal is a little bit different than the other ones, the other ones being um, a little more physical. This one is a little more in the affective domain and you're kind of um, working on the, on the culture of your team and how you want to contribute to the positive culture of your team, which is an excellent goal to have as well. Um, and then the other one is I will do 50 crunches at the end of every practice. Um, so working on your core fitness, um, I will do 60 wall sets at the end of every practice. Um, so that's more skill related. So they don't all have to be one kind. They can be a variety. Um, so you can kind of see the different types of goals you can set for practice and they're simple and, and they're doable. All right. So now goal action is time to hit pause again and take two to five minutes and just write one goal. You can add on to them later, but let's just stick with one goal um, to start with. So hit pause and write at least one goal for practices. Ready, go. Okay, so hopefully you hit pause and you wrote down at least one goal for practice. And now let's move on to goals for games. Um, so again, same type of deal. I gave you some examples here. Uh, so I will earn 10 kills per game. Um, so it's measurable and you'll know, hopefully maybe you have someone keeping stats um, for you or an assistant coach is keeping stats for you. You can keep track of how many kills you have per game. Um, and then the next one is I will earn two aces per game. So similar type of thing, looking, looking at stats. Um, and I will earn 15 assists per game. So other thing about these three goals I just gave you an example of 
is they can change depending on who your who your opponent is, right? So if you're playing a really easy opponent, um, then you might have a lot more aces than than you would against a, a very strong opponent that's going to have a very good serve receive. So you also want to think about um, looking at averages. So maybe, and we'll get this get into this when we talk about long term goals. Is also thinking about two aces per game on average. So then you're looking at you know how many you average it into how many games you've played already. Um, and then the final goal for a game is I will be a vocal leader by leading cheers at each game. So this is again a goal for games, but more contributing to the culture of the team. So your turn, write one goal um, for games. Hit pause and take two to five minutes to write out one goal. Go. All right, so hopefully you've completed that task and moving right along. All right, short-term goals. So I like short-term goals to be weekly. Um, you, of course, can make them a little shorter, a little longer. I mean, that's completely up to you, but I always like my goals to be weekly. Um, so here, um, you can work on the little aspects that you want to improve in your game, and, and maybe it's skill-related, maybe it's volleyball IQ-related, um, maybe it's skill-related. It's all completely up to you, and those aren't the only um, things that you can work on, but there's always something we can work on to improve our game. Um, so first example is I will do a minimum of 10 minutes of strength training two times a week. So that is a physical goal, and at the end of the week, you should know if you did your strength training twice for 10 minutes and you accomplished your goal. So it's easy to know if that goal was, was met. Um, I will spend a minimum of 30 minutes watching college volleyball once a week. So here you're working on volleyball IQ. Um, I will practice five minutes of visual motor rehearsal two times a week. Um, so maybe you have limited time or limited space to really get on a court and play, and you really need to work on kind of the mental aspect of your game with confidence. Um, and so maybe you want to try these visual motor rehearsal activities. And so this is the practice of seeing the game in your head without actually playing it, because we now know your mind doesn't actually know the difference when you're thinking of something as opposed to actually doing it. Your body does, and then you get muscle memory, but your brain actually can't tell the difference. Um, and there's also nutrition type goals you can set for yourself or hydration goals. So I will drink eight ounces of water every day. Um, and the last one is I will get ready for bed at 10 p.m. five times a week. So going back to the foundation and the importance of sleep. So goal action. Um, so write one short term goal. Again, you can write more goals coming back to this. But for now, just stick with one and then you can return and write a bunch more. So go ahead and hit pause and write one short-term goal for yourself. All right, so hopefully you've taken care of that. And moving along to the long-term goal. So the end of a long-term goal is completely up to you. Um, it can be six months for volleyball players. You know, Most likely it's going to be the end of your season. Um, and the other thing to think about when writing your long-term goal is Number one, it should be related to a short-term goal or a practice goal or a game goal that you already set for yourself. Um, and it should also possibly be a test so you know there has been substantial improvement in that area that you were trying to work on. Um, so, for example, in the first one, I will complete 30 push-ups without rest by the end of the season. So this was a physical strength goal. Um, and maybe this was related to the 10 push-ups before practice each day. This, this player maybe was working on physical strength and the test at the end of the season is they were going to be able to complete 30 push-ups without rest. Um, second goal is I will get all A's in all my classes by the end of the semester. So this is an academic goal, remembering that you know you are a student athlete, student coming before athlete, so you want to make sure to keep your grades up um, and maybe this is of, of particular importance to them and then that's also going back to the vision. Perhaps school was probably top of their priorities. Um, another goal is I'll be able to jump serve in games by the end of the season. All right, so maybe you've set smaller goals in between that you've, you're working on your jump serve and you're leading up to, to the long-term goals. You want to start you know, with, with process-type goals and then can lead to outcomes. And you can have small victories as you're leading up into the outcome. Um, I will average five blocks per game by the end of the season. So here we're talking what I mentioned before is having an average um, at the end of the season, see how it all pans out 
um, as you play different types of opponents. Um, and the last goal, I will increase my vertical jump by one inch by the end of the season. So again, hopefully short-term goals um, wor was working on some sort of exercises to increase vertical jump. And then this was going to be the test there at the end. All right. So looking at, look at your goals. Look at the goals you already wrote for practice, the goals you wrote for games, um, and your short-term goals, and write a goal um, for a long-term goal for the end of the season. So hit pause and give it a shot. So hopefully you've written down one long-term goal. All right, so let's wrap it up. Um, so first, you want to make sure you write your goals down. That'll help you keep, keep them accountable. Um, and then design a plan, you know, so like maybe if you get into a routine that works in conjunction with your goals, um, then you're more likely to accomplish them. So maybe Tuesday is the day that you do your push-ups and Wednesday is the day you do five minutes of volleyball touches. Um, <clears throat> you want to place your goals where you can see them every day. So just writing them and then just kind of like putting them in a notebook or forgetting about them isn't really going to help you. You want to make sure that they're relevant every day. So put them somewhere where you're going to be able to see them. Maybe your coach has an area for the team to place all of their goals up together. Um, so it keeps everyone accountable. And then you want to revisit them regularly. Just because they're hanging up there, you see them, but you're not really giving them any thought, um, that's not going to help you either. So revisit and, make, and check in and make sure that you are um, accomplishing these goals. And then, and then celebrate those, those victories, those practice goals and those weekly goals that you accomplish. Um, celebrate the process. Um, and then adjust accordingly. So maybe you set a goal and it's just completely unrealistic then just adjust it and, and, and keep going. Um, and that doesn't mean you know, you're not working hard enough, just maybe you didn't have a good idea of what was going to be realistic for you in that time frame. So adjust and then keep moving forward. All right, so that's goal setting in terms of for the individual player. So I'm just gonna mention a few concepts here for team goals and depending how your coach wants to manage team goals, um, will be will be up to them and now you'll have a good idea of how to set some really good um, measurable and doable goals and you can kind of set together with your team and this will depend on the culture of your team and what the team decides is most important but you can also structure like we mentioned before practice goals um, game goals short-term goals and long and long-term goals so I give you some examples there that you can read on your own um, and when you're doing this think again about you know outcome and process goals so Yes, we tend to, to go right into the outcome goals, like we want to you know, win the conference championship or we want to beat a certain opponent that's our rivals. Um, we want to win the fifth set every single time if need be. And those are great and I like those goals to include those as well. But also include process goals, goals that the team can do that's completely based and contingent upon each and every team member as opposed to contingent on someone else's opinion or someone else's action so like the first goal we will arrive 10 minutes early to practice is completely a process goal your the team can do that well unless there's some outside factors that prohibit you from getting there you know there's school and an after school stuff that may come in the way but other than that you know it should be the exception and not the rule um, or the second one a game goal we cheer after each point earned and huddle after each point lost so that's something the team can do each and every time that'll help with the team culture um, so, you know, take those into account uh, when working on your team goals as well. All right. So that is goal setting for volleyball players. If you have any questions or need any advice, please feel free to leave a comment. I'll be happy to check and get back to you. Um, and that is it. Thanks for checking us out at the Volleyball Head Game. And good luck.